Yeah, let me just pray real quick. Father, I just thank you, Lord, for just another day that you've given us, Father, to be found faithful. Today, Lord, we welcome you here. Father, Holy Spirit, we just ask that you would fill us, let your word penetrate our hearts, souls, and minds. Lord God, we want to be just like you, Jesus. So today, Father, just give us open hearts, open minds. Wow. Give us the very mind of Christ yes. today Amen. as we Thank study you, your truth. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 So today I was thinking about obviously the story of Daniel, right? And you've got this man and he had his three boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, right? And you got Shim, Sham, and Flim to the flam as well. You know, that's why I call like all of us are part of a team. We're part of God's family ultimately, mm -hmm. right? And what I find interesting is today I want to talk about how the team stood up in a time when people sat down. Mm -hmm. They made things known. There's a, there's, a, there's a part here, and we'll read in sections, but in Daniel chapter 3, Nebuchadnezzar builds a golden image. Nebuchadnezzar, King Nebuchadnezzar, he had a very short memory, <laughs> didn't he? Short-term memory loss. I mean, that dude... In the chapter beforehand, Daniel interprets the dream, and King Nebuchadnezzar mm -hmm. promotes Daniel, mm -hmm. right? And he's like, then the king fell upon his face and paid homage to Daniel, and then he says this in, in the end of chapter 2, Truly your God is God of gods and Lord of kings, right? Mm -hmm. And a revealer of mysteries. Then the king gave Daniel high honors and many great gifts. He promoted Daniel, and he said, your God mm -hmm. is the king. You jump two verses down into chapter three. He goes, Nebuchadnezzar's golden image. The dude has got a yeah, short memory. Just think about it. You know, in today's world, be aware of kings and people that speak fast. But actually, it's like that seed that Jesus talked about. They speak fast, but then thorns come up and weeds come up. And next thing you know, it's being swallowed up and choked out. Yeah. It's not actually as clean a soil as you would think. Mm -hmm. um, because for us, we have a mandate to speak. Mm -hmm. We have a mandate to stand. We are called to go into the world, preach the gospel, make disciples, the great commission, right? Yeah. So what is your stand look like and what does it sound like? Um, so here, let's just look at this real quick, right? So Nebuchadnezzar built his golden image. Our world is trapped in idolatry, right? Idols. The greatest idolatry in our own hearts is us. So we all can be this Nebuchadnezzar. We build our own image satoa, mm -hmm. in our own hearts because actually, ultimately, we worship God or we worship ourselves, right? So then the edict is put out about, you know, when the music drops, you drop. Mm -hmm. When the beat hits, you slam onto the floor and you worship the golden image. And then if you don't, they were building a fiery furnace at the same time. So we know the, the, the story in chapter 3, right? Yeah. Just a synopsis. And so what I find interesting in this story is that in the midst of this, right? In the midst of this dude having short-term memory or not being true to his professed faith. Because he's like, truly the, the, the God is the God of gods and the Lord of kings. He's saying... Your God reigns. Next thing you know, he goes, I reign. And if you don't bow to me, or basically, if I don't bow to myself, everybody else is going to suffer. You all do what I do. That's what he's saying. I become God, right? Now, in the midst of all this, Daniel and his boys were promoted. Think about this. I was thinking in the world of business, right? Mm -hmm. They were working in government jobs. Now, I know that they were exiled and they were taken captive, but they were risen up. Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were set apart, trained up, learned to speak the lingo, learned how to communicate with kings, and, and they were risen up. So these guys learned to serve with excellence in the midst of literal idolatry, pagan worship. Think about it today. In whatever circumstance you find yourself in, for us, the Tower of the Hundred Hen, we are working in a place where they're not worshiping God. We're in the marketplace. Well, ultimately, the God is money and power, yeah. not Jesus, right? They don't understand that it belongs to Christ. 
the business and the marketplace itself isn't the sin. It's the love of money. Money itself isn't the sin. So the love of idolatry to self. So I want to lay that picture because in the midst of all that, you had Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. This is their story. Standing up. And not only that, but they were always, they were aware of the environment they're in. Just think about this, right? In this end of chapter 2, Daniel is promoted, right? And you know that he brings his people up with him. Because he says, Daniel made a request of the king, in, in verse 49 here of chapter 2. And he appointed Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego over the affairs of the province of Babylon. Mm -hmm. Daniel brought his boys with him, but Daniel remained at the king's court. So Daniel was right with the king. But he sent his boys, the guys that were set apart, were also risen up. Now, just think of this picture. While they're serving in that court, knowing that they are set apart for God, that they are, they, their intimacy with God is number one, their identity is in God, not the circumstance, not even the fact that they've been taken from their own land, right? So we know all that. But in the midst of that, they're serving, they're being excellent. But did you ever think that while they're doing that, they could see King Nebuchadnezzar building his golden image? They were aware of what was coming. While they're in the system of the world, they weren't taken away, they weren't hiding, they're, but they were aware of what's happening. So often as Christians, we live like this, with our eyes just like this. This is all we see. We don't allow the Holy Spirit to keep our eyes wide open mm -hmm. to strongholds and circumstances. That's why for us, Pastor Gary, we go for walks. We, yeah. we, we connect with the ground and from the top. Mm -hmm. We ensure that we live aware of circumstance. Hey, what's up, brother? We, we live aware of circumstance around us. Now, with, with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, while they were working in the system excellently with the Spirit of God. Bro, just grab some food, dude. Welcome. Um, they were watching the golden image go up, and more than likely, because they understood what that meant, right? Because they sent an edict saying, if you don't bow to this, there's going to come a time where you're going to be in trouble. Because if you don't, you're going to be sent to this thing called the fiery furnace. So they were already watching and aware of the repercussions that was to come. My question is today, are you aware of the environment around you? Wherever God has planted us. Yesterday, right hand, we were walking around Barpa and Agbel. Why were we walking there? For many reasons. To bless, to know, and to connect, and to be aware. Right? So that we don't become just like tunnel vision, um, but we actually live aware of what God, where God has called us into. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were fully aware of what the King Nebuchadnezzar was doing with his short-term memory. Well, that's so like um, eye-opening for me as well, because I didn't really think about it like that before. Yes. But yes. that is so true, because there's really some bad things going on in the world, and I think mm. a lot of Christians are not really aware of the fact that Satan is really working exactly not even really behind the scenes it's so obvious in the movies of hollywood exactly. and the governments mm. the lies that the media are telling us that's right uh, the companies that are having some just evil agendas behind them exactly yeah. so there so exactly on that point because if you think about it right what was the edict when the music drops when the sound what is one of the biggest ways that the devil uses to influence minds and hearts mm -hmm. is music mm -hmm. the lyrics i mean if you go to the malls nowadays i'm like what in the world mm -hmm. are you playing yeah it's mm -hmm. pretty crazy I, I sometimes go to the manager and go i'm shopping i have a right turn off this junk i have a child here and the whole music is expletive, sexual, yeah. whatever it is. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? And I'm like, at that moment, I'm like, well, I don't want my ears and my children and those with me to have to endure this. Otherwise, I'm out. Yeah. And they always go, oh, okay, because they don't even hear it. They're so dull to it. Exactly. So th this is my point. Be aware, one, of those that are like the Nebuchadnezzars that said, your God is the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. Two verses later... I'm going to build my own idol now. Yeah. Let's be aware we don't become that. Yeah. 
-hmm. you know? Um, and number two, are you aware of these strongholds, the music, etc.? So paint that real picture, that quick picture. Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, they've been risen up in these high-ranking government jobs. They're to oversee the province of Bob Babylon. Mm -hmm. Those are like mayors. Those are like... Over yeah, governors. governors. Yeah, you know, I mean, th these are powerful men. Yeah. But they knew where they were and they could see what was coming. Mm -hmm. So think about their prep preparation. They didn't work not excellently. Well, I know what's going to come, <laughs> so I might as well just cheat, yeah. go behind the scenes, not get known, not get noticed. They worked excellently. They had a reputation that was godly. Mm -hmm. But they knew in their hearts that there was going to come a time when they would have to make a choice. Mm -hmm. And they were watching that time coming. Mm -hmm. So are we living aware of a time coming where wherever we're at, we need to make a choice. So as we know in this picture, the king makes this idol, people have to bow, and then the people get real mad. They came to the king in verse 8 of chapter 3 and go, hey, there are certain people um, uh, that, you know, that are not following your edict. And uh, there are certain Jews here, verse 12, who have, whom you have appointed over the affairs of the province. So it's like, you appointed these guys. These are the guys that have got good jobs, man. Mm -hmm. They have authority. Yeah. They're meant to carry <coughs> your seal. Mm -hmm. They're meant to represent you. Now, you start to begin to understand the SWAT likeness of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Because it says there's Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These are the guys who you appointed. These men, O king, pay no attention to you. They don't serve your gods or worship the golden image that you have set up. Now, it's really fascinating because Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego didn't hide in the shadows. Mm -hmm. They were in public. Everybody knew that when everybody... So just imagine this picture. The beat drops, right? I don't know what the sound of the beat was. Maybe it was like the drum in your thing. Boom, 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 boom. Everybody's bows, drops, right? One, the one thing I want to reiterate here is not only did they not drop, they could have been in their offices and not been in the public where people could see them not drop. Mm -hmm. They stayed right where God had put them, mm -hmm. aware that they had to stand with courage. Mm -hmm. They were committed to the cause that they had a conviction about, which was God. And everybody saw them not only not bow, but they stood. They declared something. And so when they were then addressed by the king who is going buck wild like i am furious with you then the king in furious rage commanded them to come in and be brought before him we see that in verse 13 and then he gives them a chance in verse 15. now if you're ready when you hear the sound of the horn pipe blah 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 blah, 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 blah that i have made to fall down and worship the image that i have made well well and good but if you don't worship you shall immediately be cast into this burning fiery furnace and who is the God who will deliver you out of my hands? Bearing in mind, he was just saying, there's one God above all other kings and gods. This dude has short term. He's like a goldfish, man. So goldfish mentality, right? And this is where I want to hone in today. Because we've talked about a lot about the inner workings of being Christ-like, like a Daniel, right? Here... Let's read this slowly. So Shadrach, verse 16, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king. And now they're really starting to, they're, they've been respectful, bearing in mind. They were, they were raised, right? They were appointed. They were promoted. But then they addressed him this time, not as king. They addressed him by name. Because they're now saying, look, chill a second. You're getting way above your own station here, partner. They go, O oh, Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. We don't need to answer you because I'm answering to something higher. Now, bearing in mind, these are good officials. They were excellent at their job. Yeah, yeah. People saw it. Mm -hmm. And then verse 17, if this be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace and he will deliver us out of your hand. Then he goes, O king. So, he, you know, gives them a little respect. And this is the section that I want to... You know, we've talked about even if, right? The even if kind of faith, but if not. But today, what I want to highlight is this. Be it known to you. What does your one say, PG? What's the word? Is it say, be it known to you as well? Let it be known. Let it be known. Mm. 
Let it be known to you, O king, that we will not serve your gods or worship the golden image that you have set up, even if, even if God doesn't save us, yeah. even if we don't come out. Mm. Let it be known. Mm. Be it known. Now, what are you letting being known today? You see, so often if we come to a loggerhead without expecting it, without knowing what the potential downfalls are, <clears throat> like whenever I've gone into circumstances and scenarios, I think about what the potential scenarios are so that I have a strategy. Because when you get hit with a something that you haven't planned for, it's really hard sometimes to know exactly how to act in a godly manner for one and in a wise manner, etc., etc. So I always ask God, give me wisdom, foresight. Give me dreams, whatever it is, vision, to understand what's coming. Give me eyes to see the state that we're in so that I'm not just living in this la-la mentality. <laughs> And not aware that golden images are being put up. Mm. Like in the 10 years I've been here in Davao City, I've spent every year getting to know this city better, mm. strategically. And I say that with all honesty, because I'm living aware of the circumstances around me. So I've seen certain strongholds grow. I've come here and begun to understand other strongholds. I've seen certain things come up that I know one day we'll eventually come to a loggerhead. Well, I will have to stand if I get the opportunity to. So I'm planning in accordance to those things that I see in my own heart. I'm living prepared. You see, if my identity and my actions were, were birthed out of the circumstance, I wouldn't act in a godly way. Mm -hmm. Just think about that. If, if I always act from circumstance, what are you going to act like? You're going to act in fear. You're going to act maybe deceitfully. Maybe you lie. Because your identity truly only comes when you first believe. Mm. Then you become whom, you, whom God called you to be, a son. And then your behavior follows. It takes time for your behavior to follow. Mm. Your identity first comes in believing upon Jesus, right? Mm. That I've been saved. I've been taken out of slavery, I've been redeemed, then I become a son of God, and then my behavior will... That's why sometimes some people go, I believe, but my actions are not quite there yet. <laughs> it's okay. Mm. You take your time, understand the process, but know who you are and whose you are. They knew who, who they were and whose they were, so when the time came, they were able to say, let it be known. Mm -hmm. Not only did they not bow, but they stood up. So what does standing up look like in our lives today? could be in our families. I know I've stood up many times in family circumstances and situations where it wasn't pleasant. Mm -hmm. But I ha my conviction led me to be committed to have the courage to stand up for what I knew was a biblical way of family or, or marriage or whatever it was. Right? Um, in business, do you know your identity in Christ when you make a decision? In church, do we know where we're heading as we make our decisions? Do we have that clear mindset of what we're called to be and, and what we're called to do, right? The great mandate. They stood up and they spoke at the right time. They didn't just bow. They stood and they said, let it be known. Mm -hmm. So today, that's really my message. It's not long, but I think it's profound in the sense that it all comes from knowing your identity once again. Mm -hmm. Knowing... That because we believe in Jesus, because we're saved from our own Egypts, and because Egypt has been taken out of us, our old self has been taken and redeemed. We're dead to our old self, right? That's what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. Then eventually, when we train our hearts and our minds and our bodies to have the mind of Christ, your behavior will follow suit because you know the right actions that you're taking. So they were able to stand when others bowed. And then they were able to declare, let it be known, O King, that we won't, even if, kind of faith. But that declaration comes not just with words, but with actions. But they did still speak. Isn't that interesting? So, but they waited. And that's what blows my mind. They were watching that golden image being built, and they were probably seeing the fiery furnace being created for the results of not... So, so, like, for example, in the roadmap of your life today, Hen, right? I like to pick on Hen, right? As, a, as, a, as a young man, there are certain decisions that you can make, right? That could either 
with the circumstances around you that could either swallow you up and entangle you so you live aware of those things right and so you build your life in accordance to understanding that when those temptations or when those pressures come you will not bow instead you will stand for righteousness because you're standing for someone greater and I'm talking about future Mrs. <laughs> Rosal, right? You're standing for her and then you can say to her, I stood for you yeah. before I even met you. I prayed for you. I was aware of the wolves trying to steal what God has given me. You are my inheritance, right? I'm just saying that as a picture, but you can paint that in any kind of circumstance so that you're ready to stand and declare, let it be known that even if I don't physically get saved from this circumstance, my God still God and I will not bow. In fact, I'm going to keep standing and declare. So what part in our lives are we declaring and what are we declaring about? That's the noise I'm talking about. In action, I mean, obviously last week we talked about William Wallace, you know, about living that, <laughs> living that warrior life, you know. With a, with a hard head and whatever it is, you know, a, a lovesick warrior. But are you living ready and aware? Because I think that's a real key. That's why they were successful. Wherever you go into today. So let me pray real quick and then maybe we can break it down. That sound good? Our worship. Father, I just thank you for your truth. And thank you, Lord God, you've given us everything we need Amen. for a firm foundation in Jesus Christ. I thank you, Lord God, that you said in your word, when we confess you before men lord god you acknowledge us before the heavenly father so today lord god we confess you are lord and our king help us to not be like nebuchadnezzar lord god where we confess you with one breath and the next breath lord god we confess ourselves lord god help us to walk that line of humility help us lord god to walk that line of revelation that we belong to you our identity is in you and not in circumstance lord god we worship you and we declare today, Lord God, let it be known that there is only one Jesus, there is only one way, and it's through Christ himself. We thank you, Lord, we love you, and we bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.